and a, uh, a very good evening. Welcome to uh, Sunday's Cartmel preview. Um, I promised one or two people I'd do a, a Cartmel preview for the weekend. I do enjoy racing at Cartmel, uh, enjoy watching it, and uh, I was looking forward to going up at some point this year. Um, sadly, that's not going to be the case. Gonna have to wait till next year for that now. Um, but nevertheless, uh, interesting little card tomorrow. We've got eight races. And there's probably sort of three or four bets, I think, on the card at the moment. On what should be, I think, good to soft going. Um, they had some more rain again. They had, certainly had rain in the week and they had another six mil overnight Friday into Saturday. And I would think, judging by the way that showers have come across the country uh, this afternoon, they'll probably have a little bit more as well. So it'll certainly be on, certainly be good to soft. And they'll be, they'll be cutting the ground. Um, 12.50 is a, a novice early kickoff. Uh, we want to uh, kick off one of these two mile one where the the one that i'm sort of um i don't think it's a bet tomorrow but I, um i have got an eye on no quarter asked when uh, peter bowen's when he goes handicapping now um peter bowen's not had a winner yet since the return of racing it's been a while um i think it's probably february march time since he's had a winner um he will start having winners soon he will start having winners, soon. and it, it may be it maybe it starts tomorrow. Um, I think no quarter trust wants better going than it's likely to get tomorrow. I think that's the key. Um, it finished four lengths off um, Gene Strelli at Utoxeter on reappearance, and that's probably just about the the best of anything that Peter's had in terms of the way that they've run. Uh, his jumping wasn't great at times. He made a couple of mistakes there, um, but the it was good to see that his ability, and this was the, the, the point I was trying to make for those of you that remember, I, I did the previews for your talks of that day. His, his bumper runs were pretty good, um, but he'd been, he had all of his bumper runs after that, these uh, sort of two bumper runs were on much softer ground, and then he had to go over the hurdles at Hereford in March, and that was on soft ground as well. So I think he needs good ground is the point I'm sort of trying to get across. And I think once he gets that again and he gets handicapped, then you'll see um, no core trust uh, probably winning a race. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that I'll let you go now. He's five to four. That looks short to me that uh, I, I I could almost lay him at that price, I think, because there are you've got sort of three and a half in here with a chance of getting him beaten. I didn't think that um, I didn't think that Stratford run was uh, I mean, it looks good on the face of it. He's he sort of finished second to a a well back favourite in Pogo I am but you know, one or two didn't run their races that day and he just sort of went through a few beaten ones at the end I don't know I, I, I just don't think it looks quite as good as it as it appears and I think at five to four I'd probably be wanting to, to sort of just lay it and have the likes of Heist Mountain and and totally rejected and no quarter ass running for me against him I think but uh, we'll see we'll see in the morning uh, the 125, I do think there's a bet in this. Uh, this is the um, three mile, one and a half furlong sticky toffee pudding handicap hurdle. Um, available at all good farm shops near you. Uh, the sticky, the cotton or sticky toffee pudding. Um, it's about a million calories for uh, everyone. So unfortunately, because I'm on a diet, I can't have one at the moment. But anyway, um, they put Court Blue in as a nine to four favourite. And I go with that because I think Court Blue needs a bit of cutting the ground. He, Got withdrawn at Perth in the week because the ground was way too quick, um, way too quick for him. Um, he's perfectly capable um, of simply outclassing this lot um, if he's fit, and I think nine to four is a is the right price for him. Well, equally, I think seven to one for Atley Put is probably a couple of points too big. I would have him around about a sort of nine to two, five to one chance. I think for this aptly put because he's got less to prove than a lot of, of these um he came back off a bit of a break in july last year having not run since the february um so around about a sort of 150 day break something along them lines and ran a really good race ran his best race really fresh um that was over this course of di over this course and distance on soft ground in a better class race than this and he got beat just under four lengths by just a tenner that day that was off a mark of 108 he's off a mark of 104 tomorrow and james moffitt's horses seem to be in pretty good order he had a winner and a third at perth 
on Wednesday, and then he had a couple of Utoxita, one of which was unfancied and was nowhere, and the other one was Mega Double, and we'll come to him in a bit as well. Um, then his form sort of fell away autumn into the winter, but I think fresh might be the time to catch him. The mark's ideal. We know what conditions are no problem for him, and the train is in good nick. So I thought seven to one was a little bit too big, and I cert- and I wouldn't put you off an each way bet either at that price because I think there are a lot of these that that can't win it. And probably only two or three, I think, that can. Um, Akil Road Boy is on a, a good lucky mark compared to his chase form. Um, if he really, really sailed down again overnight and into tomorrow, that brings his unlimited stamina into play. But I think as it stands, he might find one or two a little bit quicker. And I get the feeling he might be using this as a bit of a warm up uh, for a chase campaign again. Invincible Cave, Chris Gordon, I he's off a mark of 92. Now, you haven't got to go back that far. To find him off a mark of 116, he was off that at the turn of the year, and that just shows you how far down the, the ladder, I'm afraid, he's gone. Um, I mean, the interesting thing is Chris Gordon bringing it all the way up to Cartmel, obviously, when there were races at Newton Abbott last night. The, you know, if he was if he was just having a run round, another run round to get fit, he could have taken part in. Yes, he'd have probably been outclassed again, but, you know, it, it's interesting that he comes all the way up here. Um, for a, a weak looking contest but that's your only interesting bit really because on form he's, he's struggling definitely um, but the, the mark is very very low as I say um, but I, I do like I do like Atley Putt hopefully he'll run a good race um, I think he's, he's I think he's got a decent chance um, interesting that the tongue ties off him as well there's no tongue tie on Atley Putt so hopefully whatever problems that they've they've had with him is they've been sorted out. I'll take that as a, a positive rather than a, a negative. Um then there's a novice hurdle that I've got little interest in to be perfectly honest, Mark. It's sewn it up. There's probably only two or three that can win. And they're in the right betting order. I think taking um I think um Tango Echo okay, Charlie probably should just about be favourite over Liffy Dale Dreamer. Um and I've no no interest really in in having a bet in that two thirty five, uh, in the two o'clock rather. But the two thirty five um, uh, novice. This is a novice's handicap chase. Um, it, it's an it's an interesting contest. Again, I don't. I couldn't see a bet when I first looked at it. I mean, it's one of these that I'll, I'll have a look at with fresh eyes tomorrow, and I might see something. Um, but they they are not necessarily much of a muchness. But trying to find an angle into this was was very difficult um and there was nothing jumping out at me so again i'm I'm happy at this stage to I'm happy at this stage to sort of pass it over and give it a miss um the 310 is another handicap chase this one over two miles two miles one and a half and i think the question is whether lick lighter will be as happy on ground with a bit of cutting it as he was um as it was at banger um if if it's the case that he, he handles a bit of cut, then he's probably the one to be. But that's not, it isn't a guarantee. And I think if you were soft ground, you know, you then it, it would ask a bit more of a question. I'm, I think on I think on soft ground, all of the front three would, would have something to prove. Probably thought Delotion less than the other two, but um, soft ground would make it a bit more of a, a bit more of an open contest. But a little lighter look well in front of the handicapper when he won at Bangor. Um, I don't think the, the drop back a couple of furlongs is going to be a problem to him. Um, and he's, he's the one to beat if, as I say, the ground's not desperate. Um, the 345 is the Cartmel Cheese Handicap Chase, three miles, one and a half furlongs. A um, couple of interesting ones in this. Old Blue Cascade, um, 13 years young now. Um, it won't seen him since last December, but it used to be the case that fresh was the time to catch blue cascade um and the handicappers giving him a right chance off a mark of 107 ryan man you're back in the saddle as well i think he's a big i think that's a big plus for blue cascade tomorrow um i can see him being prominent throughout um he won't mind the ground i don't think um and although he's 13 years old um tomorrow might tomorrow could be his day um day of roses as well who for Joanne Foster, who's only three pound higher than his last winning mark. My worry with with Day of Roses, I th- I thought he ran all right at market raising, um, on his reappearance. That was the first time we'd seen him since um last October, 
and he's definitely going to come on from that. He only weakened late. I thought his jumping was pretty good in the main, and he only sort of weakened out of it from, from two out. Um, he definitely looked like he needed the run. If he comes on a little bit from that, I don't think he'll mind soft ground. He's, um, his form's a little bit in and out on all on all grounds, but um, he seemed to handle it when he was... Um, and then he's last of five at Bangor behind on your bike, but he only got beat eight, eight length that day. They were all sort of in a heap, and he handled soft ground okay that day. Um, I thought they were the interesting pair in that, in an, in an, an open looking handicap. Um, download the app, having his first run here for David Thompson in ITAC Sadiq's colours. ITAC not training it, <laughs> it's uh, David Thompson training it. It's left David Bridgewater. Um, that did me a few favours last year, um, but he's off a mark of 107 now in a, a slightly better race. So he will need to pull some more out of the bag. And, and Federici's been putting his favourite. I don't think I don't think three miles one and a half are arguably far enough for Federici these days. And I don't want McCain's yard a little bit in and out as well. So I'd say the, the, a couple of interesting ones. I think Blue Cascade's the most interesting one. I know he's getting on a bit, but as I say, fresh might be the time to catch him. Uh, and then probably the race that um, is one of the more interesting ones, I think, because I I, I wanted to take on, this is a, the 420, by the way, it's a two mile one handicap hurdle. I wanted to take on Emma Lamb. Um, you know exactly where you are with Emma Lamb and the handicapper knows where he, where he is with Emma Lamb as well. She, she's just, she just finds winning hard. Now, you know, it might be that they found the right race for, for Emma Lamb tomorrow, but, um, but equally, Two to one, you'd want to look, you'd want to look for something else, I think, at that sort of a price. Um, pardon me, looked pretty much the obvious one after um, his run at Utah Civil. He will want, I think, I think he won't, he won't want soft ground. Um, he'll, he'll just about get away with it if it's good to soft ground. I don't think he'll want genuine soft ground. Um, and again, it was the sort of, um, it was the two, uh, um, James Moffat also that sort of jumped out a little bit after you. The, the booking of Brian Hughes for Oakmont, I think, sort of screams out a little bit at you. Um, you got a horse here that you haven't got to go back too far, and um, you know he was rated in the uh, he was rated in the eighties um, on his platform in Ireland, and he's off one hundred and four tomorrow. Um, he just he, he ran at um, he ran at Thursk in a, a a low grade handicap at the end of June over a mile and a half and he ran really well that day he got beat less than three lengths um and he was sticking on really well at the end i think if it's the case that james has has got him back to something like his old form um i think he's he's well handicapped off a mark he is well handicapped off a mark of 104 tomorrow ground won't be an issue um i think he's he's probably the one to beat um i gave a look to um Think Ahead as well, written by Charlotte Jones, um, who basically more or less on, on sort of course and distance form, which is really good. Um, he just loves it around here. He loves whizzing around here. And he won off a mark of 101 last August. He's up 104 tomorrow. I just think Oakmont is the one tomorrow. I think he's better handed. He's the better handicapped of the two. And as I say, that booking of Brian Hughes just sort of, it's got flashing lights on it, really. It's a bit of a beacon. And then, then we came to the last, and uh, and it was you know you sort of end up with these trainers, and it was James Moffat again. There were two in the last. This is a, a two mile six handicap hurdle, and again there were there were two that sort of um, jumped off the page a little bit at me. Um, well, one of them, one of them sadly was the the favourite chocolate noir. Um, unsurprising, you know, been putting it two to one after his effort behind. Um, Sebastian Beach uh, at, at at Southall didn't lead that day. Normally leads Chocolate Noir. When you look at his his wins last year at here at Cartmel and Perth, made all on both occasions. He, that wasn't the case at, at Southall. He was sort of kept in midfield, and his jumping suffered a bit for it as well. I expect they'll go from the front with Chocolate Noir tomorrow, and he's going to be hard to beat. But um, Mega Double ran in the week at Utoxeter and ran a little bit better than his finishing position sort of suggests. He was 7th to 10 behind yes, no, maybe, sorry. Um, and he just sort of got, a, he, he, he just made a mistake three out and that put him on the back foot. He was still bang there and travelling at the time. Um, 
what's interesting with Mega Double is the fact that this, he's got this three day turnaround and twice um, when they've they've turned Mega Double around quickly, um, he's he's run really well. Not least of which last August when he ran twice at Cartmel, he ran on the twenty fourth, finished second, and then he was turned out again on the twenty sixth, and he won and he won easily as well with with Brian Hughes in the saddle. But they they've done it before as well with Mega Double. They've turned him around. Um, they've turned him around quickly. Um, he ran on the 30th of June last year at Cartmel, finished third, and then came out on the 4th of July. So a four, five day turnaround and he won by nine lengths at Perth. So the fact that he's been turned around pretty quick is a bit of an indicator, I think, with Mega Double that they think he's in with a decent chance tomorrow. I think those are the, the, the two that I thought. I thought one or the other would definitely win it. Um, unfortunately, as I say, two to one chocolate tomorrow is a bit short, but the the six to one mega double should give you a, a bit of a run for your money. So there we go. I'll try and do a couple more of these um, previews and point out one or two interesting ones as we uh, as we go along um, the jump season over the next couple of weeks. Um, best of luck tomorrow, and uh, I'll catch you in the week.